This is Hero. How's everyone doing today? Ajibala Kem Cho. Aj sub Keseho. So today I am talking about the D3 chart, okay? Or the Drekana chart. Now, this chart used to be used a lot more frequently back in the day, okay? But these days it's not used that much, right? Why? Well, we know that the ninth chart, the D, I mean the D9 chart, the Navamsha chart is used, right? Because the D1 chart is showing everything that's happening externally, but the D9 chart does a really, really, really good job of summarizing what's happening internally, right? Because it's kind of like uh, like a glimpse or like an inside glimpse of the ninth house in detail, which shows kind of what we're learning and how we're processing things internally. However, a huge influence on that is the like of the ninth house is the third house, or you could say of the D9 chart is the D3 chart, right? Why? Because if you look in the Lugna chart, the ninth and the third house aspect each other, okay? So they their energies obviously feed off of each other. What we learn affects our efforts. What our efforts are affects what we learn. So you can see there's a huge tie there of energies. And because we value the D9 chart so much, and you should probably understand why, uh, and most of you guys probably do if you're watching this video, but yeah, I think you can see there why the D3 chart is so important. The D9 chart, yeah, it's showing everything that's happening internally, what we're learning, how we're thinking of things inside and all this kind of stuff, but the D3 chart is showing our efforts, right? Which is very, very, very good for, like to, to be aware of this in general, right? And the reason why over time, in my opinion, this chart has not been that much looked at is because most people, they look at astrology for a couple of things. They see, okay, what's going to happen or what's the problem with this thing, right? And what's going to happen or what's the, what's the problem? It's usually very, very isolated events, like, uh, like some career thing or some relationship or marriage thing, something like this, right? So they'll just purely look at the houses that conventionally signify that thing in the Lugna chart, which is... A little bit of a mistake because for example marriage they tend to look at just like a couple of houses even though they fail to understand that there's a lot of houses that somehow tie into marriage but they'll just look at like the seventh or the eleventh or like just the second but like or like just the fifth but like they, they, you have to look at all of them but like they'll just look at those houses right and they'll just look at you know the divisional charts that represent marriage which most people just look at d9 and they won't even look at d7 which i think is a huge mistake but even outside of just D9 and D7, they definitely won't probably look at too much else, right? But for example, the D3 chart here, or even the D4 chart, but like in my, like since this video is on the D3 chart, the D3 chart hugely is gonna impact your marriage, right? But, be, and the reason why they don't look at it is because they fail to understand one concept, okay? Or actually two concepts, but it's two sub-concepts tied into one main concept. And the two sub-concepts are, that everything that's happening uh, is kind of s seen a little bit in every divisional chart, like internally or externally. And every divisional chart has a slight influence on everything that's happening internally and externally. Okay, so everything that's happening is seen throughout all the divisional charts. And each divisional chart has a slight influence on everything that's happening. Okay, so I hope that kind of made sense. So for example, with marriage, D1 chart is showing what's what's happening, right? Is, is your person good looking or like whatever, right? Do they did you meet them through their job? The D7 chart, it's like I said, it's showing what's happening materially, right? Like, you know, everything that's happening in all the material aspects of marriage. And the D9 is more spiritual aspects of marriage, which is more important, but it's a little bit different flavor than D7, right? But let's just say the D7 and the D9 are okay, right? Like... You know, you found the perfect partner. Yeah, they vibe with you. They're, 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 they're your person. You really feel connected with them. But if the D3 chart is just not there, like it's just not that good, you could feel like, dude, like you, you, you're still just not putting in the efforts in the right way for, for, for whatever reasons, right? And that's that's big because you, you know that that's a problem. And in today's modern, you know, thinking, you could, you could, if you're not aware, you could kind of be like, oh, you, uh, maybe I'm not putting in the right efforts because I haven't found the right person, either internally or externally. They're not, you know, what I want. But maybe they are what you want, but you're just not putting in the right efforts for a certain reason 
And that could be seen from the D3 chart. But if you're not looking at it, you won't even know, right? Or you could have this problem that you're not putting in the right efforts and you're, you're just looking at those divisional charts in the, like the D7 and the D9 and the Lugna chart and you're not even able to see at all why, well, what the problem is, right? Which is an even bigger problem. So yeah, we need to look at the D3 chart just in general, okay? For a career, you look at the D1 chart just to see, okay, am I getting a new job promotion? Am I getting fired? Whatever. The D10 chart... I know most people don't look at it like this, but you should be looking at it just to see, okay, how are you feeling karmically with your job? Do you feel like you're doing the right thing? Do you feel like, you know, this is the right career for you, blah, blah, blah. That could be great, right? You could be having the right job. You could really feel like you're making, uh, you know, an impact with your employees, your bosses, your clients, whatever. But if you're just not putting in the right efforts for whatever reason, that's going to be a problem, right? And that, and that could be seen from the D3 chart. Okay, uh, it, it's going to show like, hey, look, like you, you're just not putting in a, a enough effort for whatever reason, right? It could, but and the reason varies from case to case, depending on what's going on in your chart. But you could see here how this is, uh, why, what the importance is of looking at the D3 chart, right? Um, now, but let's just say vice versa, right? Let's just say the D1 chart is showing, you know, something great. And the D3 chart is also showing great. So you're, you're at this thing, this great job, this great person, whatever, and you're putting in the right effort. Well, let's just say the D9 chart, I'm using the D9 chart because it could represent both like a marriage or career thing, is not that great, right? Then you know, okay, your efforts are good, but, uh, uh, you know, it's just, just, just somehow internally, there's, just, there's a certain way that you feel about this thing. And you have to address that problem accordingly. But it has nothing to do with your efforts and it has nothing to do with how things are externally, right? But you could just feel like internally, like, you know, this thing is not good enough or whatever, for, for whatever reasons, right? Or if they both suck, let's just say the D3 chart and the D9 chart are both crap, okay? And you know, not only the D9 chart is showing something spiritually that's happening that you need to work on, but also your, effort, your, your, also your efforts also suck, right? Like you, you need to put more effort in in general. Even as you're fixing this thing at the D9 level, you also need to put, fix your efforts at the D3 level, okay? Or you can, and I'm just giving some examples, but you can, you can, you can, there's an infinite, or not an infinite, but a, a very large amount of combinations of what could happen that can be seen here and that you need to take, you need to ideally be aware about and take action about. But like I said, the D3 chart is showing efforts in everything. You put in effort in everything, right? So everything in your life, the D3 chart is going to have an influence on that, okay? Just like D10 chart. It's not just used for career. It's used to see, I mean, I just made a video on D10 chart, but I'm just kind of tying two points together. It's showing how with anything you do in life, how you feel karmically about that. D7 chart, it's not just marriage. It's just any relation you have, how in general the flavor is with that. Now, specifically with, for example, D10 chart, your job versus everything else, you got to look at the house in the D10 chart. Specifically in D7 chart, your marriage versus other relations, you got to look at the houses. But same thing with D3 chart, specifically with certain things, you got to look at the houses, which Dasha planets are you running? Where are they in the D3, D3 chart? Excuse me. What in what houses, what houses they own, planets conjunct, aspect, all this kind of stuff. But you need to look at how your efforts are in your life. Okay, your efforts uh, um, affect everything. Okay, I'll give you a couple quick examples, but just real quick before I do that. And, uh, you know, in your D1 chart, you have a bunch of houses, okay? These are free will houses. You're, you, you don't think your efforts affect your free will, okay? This is, uh, this is why you need to look at the D3 chart. You need to see how your eff efforts are affecting your life because definitely your efforts affect what you learn which is what the third house and ninth house represent and that's a huge huge axis not only in the d1 chart but also your d3 chart affects your d9 chart which is why a lot of people used to look at both of these charts but unfortunately in today's predictive only way of looking at jyotish they do not look at the d3 chart but you need to look at the d3 chart okay i'll give you a couple examples let's just say you have Ven you're running a D venus dasha and your venus is in the seventh house I'm giving you a couple of specific examples because I know there's not too much information about this or good information about this. Let's just say your Venus is in the seventh house debilitated, okay? It's in Virgo. Uh, and you're running a D Venus Dasha somehow, okay? Uh, this could show that you're not putting in efforts with other people because you think, okay, no matter how much effort I put, 
it's, it's still not going to be enough. I'm still going to put in more effort. Why put in any effort at all? Okay. But in that situation, in general, I'd, rep I'd recommend, okay, you become aware of that and you just say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I understand. Um, you know, no effort, no amount of effort might be enough in some situations, but I still need to try and put in efforts in certain things, especially when it comes to relations since Venus is in the seventh house. I'll give you one other quick example. Let's just say you're running Saturn. It's in Leo and it's in your um, 10th house. Okay. Saturn's in Leo in the 10th house. Leo is not a great placement for Saturn. Okay. If you didn't know, which yeah, I'll just leave it at that. If you didn't know, uh, this could show that you're not putting in efforts with things that you do. I know 10th house represents is conventionally coined with career, but I just said like in this video and as well as others, 10th house or D10, it represents just everything you do. It's just career is a big part of what we do. So we tend to just coin 10th house with career. But when it comes to things that you do, especially career, possibly the Saturn placement in Leo is showing that, hey, you know what? This, this, whatever we do, it's just not giving us that much fulfillment, okay? I just always kind of feel unsatisfied and all this kind of stuff. What we need to understand is that, yeah, sure, we could feel unsatisfied, but at the end of the day, there's just certain things that we got to do, okay? We just got to suck it up and do them. Uh, don't take that the wrong way, but uh, if you know what I mean, but just, just, you just got to do certain things, okay? Uh, and that's what that placement in general represents, okay? So... Yeah, and just one other quick point, uh, the D3 chart or the third house in general, it, it's highly connected to siblings, especially younger siblings, right? This, in my opinion, and I'm not sure if anybody else has seen any information on this, but I haven't, and this is something that I resonate with personally, having two younger siblings of myself, but siblings, especially younger siblings, are people that we have to put in the most self-effort with, okay? This is why the D3 chart or the third house in general is highly, highly, highly connected to self-efforts because these are just the people that we have to put self-efforts in with the most. Just like 10th house, it represents everything that we do, but it's highly connected to career because career has, it's like one of the largest things that we do, okay? Same thing with 7th house. It represents marriage, but it could also represent all relations in general. So D3 chart, yeah, it could represent siblings, but because of that fact, okay, but it's not only represented siblings, it's representing efforts with all things. Hey, but like I said, your efforts play a huge, huge, huge fact in everything you do in life, and I think it's very, very, very important to look at this D3 chart, okay? Uh, so I think that's the end of that this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to let me know, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you very much for watching.